Chapter Seven of Book Six of Les Misérables, Volume Two. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Paradise Camouflage. Les Misérables, Volume Two, by Victor Hugo, translated by. Isabelle Florence Hapgood Book Six Le Petit Picpi Chapter Seven Some Silhouettes of this Darkness During the six years which separate eighteen nineteen from eighteen twenty five, the prioress of the Petit Picpi was Mademoiselle de Blemer, whose name in religion was Mother Innocente. She came of the family of Marguerite de Blemer author of Lives of the Saints of the Order of St. Benoit. She had been re-elected. She was a woman about sixty years of age, short, thick, singing like a cracked pot, says the letter, which we have already quoted, an excellent woman, moreover, and the only merry one in the whole convent, and for that reason adored. She was learned, erudite, wise, competent, curiously proficient in history, crammed with Latin, stuffed with Greek, full of Hebrew, and more of a Benedictine monk than a Benedictine nun. The sub-prioress was an old Spanish man, Mother Cineres, who was almost blind. The most esteemed among the vocal mothers was Mother Saint Honorine, the treasurer, Mother Saint Gertrude, the chief mistress of the novices, Mother Saint-Ange, the assistant mistress, Mother Annonciation, the sacristan, Mother Saint-Augustine, the nurse, the only one in the convent who was malicious, then Mother Saint-Merchtilde, Mademoiselle Gauvin, very young and with a beautiful voice, Mother Desange, Mademoiselle Druet, who had been in the convent of the Filles Dieu and in the convent du Trésor between Gisard and Magny, Mother Saint Joseph, Mademoiselle de Gogoludu, Mother Sainte Adelaide, Mademoiselle d'Auvernay, Mother Miséricorde, Mademoiselle de Sifuante, who could not resist austerities, Mother Compassion, Mademoiselle de la Mitière, received at the age of sixty in defiance of the rule and very wealthy. Mother Providence, Mademoiselle de Laudnier, Mother Presentation, Mademoiselle de Sigenza, who was prioress in 1847, and finally Mother Saint Céline, sister of the sculptor Seracchi, who went mad, Mother Saint Chantal, Mademoiselle de Suzanne, who went mad. There was also among the prettiest of them a charming girl of three-and-twenty, who was from the Isle du Bourbon, a descendant of the Chevalier Rose, whose name had been Mademoiselle Rose, and who was called Mother Assumption. Mother Saint Michetil, entrusted with the singing in the choir, was fond of making use of the pupils in this quarter. She usually took a complete scale of them, that is to say, seven, from ten to sixteen years of age, inclusive, of assorted voices and sizes, whom she made sing standing, drawn up in a line, side by side, according to age, from the smallest to the largest. This presented to the eye something in the nature of a reed pipe of young girls, a sort of living pan pipe made of angels. Those of the lay sisters whom the scholars loved most were Sister Euphrasie. Sister Sainte Marguerite, Sister Sainte Marthe, who was in her dotage, and Sister Sainte Michel, whose long nose made them laugh. All these women were gentle with the children. The nuns were severe only towards themselves. No fire was lighted except in the school, and the food was choice compared to that in the convent. Moreover, they lavished a thousand cares on their scholars. Only, when a child passed near a nun and addressed her, the nun never replied. 
This rule of silence had had this effect, that throughout the whole convent, speech had been withdrawn from human creatures, and bestowed on inanimate objects. Now it was the church bell which spoke, now it was the gardener's bell, a very sonorous bell placed beside the portress, and which was audible throughout the house, indicated by its varied peals, which formed a sort of acoustic telegraph, all the actions of material life which were to be performed and summoned to the parlour in case of need, such or such an inhabitant of the house. Each person and each thing had its own peal. The prioress had one and one, the sub-prioress one and two. Six-five announced lessons, so that the pupils never said go to lessons, but to go to six-five. Four-four was Madame de Genlis's signal. It was very often heard. C'est le diable à quatre. It's the very deuce, said the uncharitable. Ten iron strokes announced a great event. It was the opening of the door of seclusion, a frightful sheet of iron bristling with bolts which only turned on its hinges in the presence of the archbishop. With the exception of the archbishop and the gardener, no man entered the convent as we have already said. The schoolgirl saw two others, one, the chaplain, the abiban, old and ugly, whom they were permitted to contemplate in the choir through a grating, the other, the drawing-master, Monsieur Anchiot, whom the latter, of which we have perused a few lines, calls Monsieur Anciot and describes as a frightful old hunchback. It will be seen that all these men were carefully chosen. Such was this curious house. End of Book 6, Chapter 7 Recording by Andy in Verarn in Scotland MELYS dot W S